Hey everybody, I am mowing hay right now. I want to quickly apologize for being so far behind on replying to your comments on that last video about crop insurance. I'm sorry about that. It's been an insane week. You're about to watch a video about repairing our barn and believe it or not, it had nothing to do with storm damage. This was just something that uh, we needed to do and I got it torn apart and then that storm came through and the way I had it torn apart, we had to fix it. Um, I didn't have anybody right around here really close to us that had any damage that needed any help. The damage really started about half an hour away from us. Um, and to be honest, a lot of the damage was so bad that it was just heavy equipment cleanup anyway. So we were working on our barn last week and that's what you're about to see right now. So I'll do my best to get caught up when I get time. I promise I'll try to get around to answering every one of your questions in the comments. I'm doing the best I can. It's been really crazy. Thanks for hanging with me. Hey there, thanks for turning down my road. If this is your first time here, my name's Carl. My little brother and I both work for local farmers full time, but we both also farm together with our cattle herd and our hay operation. Everybody's involved, from the smallest to the biggest. If you don't have the joy of farming yourself, I'd love to help you experience it through this channel. Whatever your background, you found the right place. This is Dodge Brothers, farm and ranch. I know everybody is talking about all the storm damage in the Midwest. We didn't have any storm damage at all. Honestly, we got really lucky. This year behind me is not storm damage. This is me damage. This barn has needed siding really bad for the last 10 or 12 years. We put a roof on it in 2017 and did a really good job, I might add. It was a lot of work. A tornado came through and sucked the roof right off this barn. We were planning on just burying what was left of it, but then we started looking around and decided we would fix it up. So that's what we did. And now it needs new siding. It has needed it for a long time, but it's going to get it now. I just kind of been patching it up with some old tin. You see that piece of tin right there and that piece of tin right there that we tore off the roof on the lean-to and we replaced that on the other side. I just kind of been patching it together and it's time for it to be done right. I want it to all look like this. I want it to all look beautiful. So this barn's gonna get new siding too, just not this week probably, hopefully in the next couple weeks, in the next month. Let me show you some of the stuff that I discovered while I was tearing the siding off yesterday that was not good. So I found a lot of places like this where these posts are not quite as solid as they should be at the bottom given that they are what supports the barn. So I've got a lot of repair work to do here before we can get started putting siding on and here. So that's what's gonna happen tomorrow and maybe the rest of today if I got enough time. So here's my first truckload of lumber that I had to buy that I wasn't planning on buying. This is basically what it's gonna take to fix the barn up so that I can put siding back on the east side. Do you want to explain to the world what we had to do to fix the barn? Uh, or would you rather I do it? You? Because I don't... I mean, we cut boards and put boards in. All right, here, you take the camera, follow me around, and I'll... All right, so this is the barn. And when we took the siding off it, all of the wood siding that had been in really bad shape for a long time, I discovered that around every one of the windows, where the windows were framed in, all the framing was rotten underneath and some of them were framed right up against the main support posts slash studs, whatever you want to call them. And it was all rotten on the bottom of the post and on the ledge, sill plate, board, whatever you want to call it. I'm not a construction guy, I'm a farmer, okay? So come take a look at this, what we did to fix it. As you can see, I mean, you can still see some of the rotting right here on the original board. This had a window framed right up against this corner and it was rotted here, and then the inside of this post was rotted pretty badly. But the rest of this board is pretty solid all the way across. I mean, it's a little rotten here on the edge, but when you get back a couple inches, it's really solid. And it's still anchored down to the center block walls with the half-inch anchor bolts. Those bolts are in good shape, the anchors are in good shape. It was really solid, so rather than jacking the whole barn up and 
taking this plate out, cutting all those bolts off and starting fresh, which is probably the right thing to do. We put a new plate along the top all the way across, screwed it into the old board. I'm gonna be putting some bigger lag screws in there. And then we sandwiched these posts to kind of make use of what was left of the post and uh, ran this up about three feet. And then we've got these little metal brackets that are holding the posts down to the plate to keep things from shifting in or out or from picking up in a windstorm if we have a big windstorm come out of the east. But we tore this barn apart on Monday and Monday was the day that the crazy derecho storm went through Iowa and ruined everything. We missed out on the really bad damage by about 20 miles. 20 miles south of here, it starts to get pretty bad. So we already had this all opened up and there's really nothing we could do but finish it because if you leave this open like this with the roof the way it is, we get a big east wind blowing in here. It's just gonna tip the whole barn right over. So we had to finish this since we got it opened up and this took a lot of rebuilding. We had to jack some of these posts up. That door frame over there used to be a really short like calf door or a pig door or something. And we built it up into a full size man door. And I think we've got it pretty sturdy. So today we're gonna to be putting uh, boards on the front of the posts and hanging steel if everything goes well. Let's get her done. Well, it's lunchtime and we pretty much got all of the wood up that the steel's gonna to screw to. Um, we put the top one up on this end and we're not gonna put it all the way across until we make sure that's exactly where I want the top one to be because I've got a special piece of trim that goes up on the top of the steel that's gonna hold the soffit if we can ever get a soffit to fit in there. And I wanna make sure that's gonna be in exactly the right place because believe it or not, this end of the barn actually sits just a, low, a little lower than the rest of it. When you get on the other side of this doorway, this corner hangs maybe an inch and a half low compared to the rest of it. So the steel, we wanna make sure it's definitely gonna cover here and it'll overlap nicely here. And we gotta kinda of fudge some things around. We had to do some other kind of silly things. Let me show you this. Believe it or not, everything wasn't perfectly straight. I'm sure you're super surprised about that. But like right here, we had to actually shim a piece of plywood behind because this post wasn't perfectly straight. We had to do that in a couple other locations as well. Gonna go grab a bite to eat, then we'll try hanging some steel. Well, it's been a day. We're getting ready to go for supper. But look at this. Is that an improvement or what? We got the uh, plastic tough rib Amish barn style windows in there. It's a really, really easy way to do it. Rather than trimming out the old windows and risking a leak and rotting more wood. Come look at this. It's just a piece of plastic tough rib made in the same pattern as the ribs on the barn and you overlap the top and then overlap the plastic over the bottom and you've got a nice window as long as you don't as long as you don't have to open it for any reason I mean I don't know they're not they're not ugly it's not quite as nice as if you had the trimmed out white double square windows but it lets light in for the cows and it was something that we could do and definitely know that it wasn't gonna leak. Man, 
That looks nice. Woo! Guys, did you ever wonder how they move massive amounts of corn up and down the river? We're at Lock and Dam number 10 on the Mississippi River right now. This is just kind of a little excursion for my birthday today. And we got lucky, we got here just in time. Here's a full tow of 15 barges just getting ready to come through this lock. This is pretty sweet. There's almost a thousand semi loads of corn getting ready to float into this lock right now. How would you like to be that tugboat driver? It always amazes me. There's just about five feet on either side of that. Five feet to spare on either side before they would be hitting the walls. That is good driving. Wow. All right, this is too long to all fit in at once. So we got the first two rows unhooked and they pulled it back out with the tugboat and now they're shutting the gates. We've got nine barges in the lock. These here are full of junk, shredded, recyclable metal. I assume that's why they don't have the lids on them. I assume the rest of them must have corn or soybeans or something inside of them that they don't want to allow rain to get onto. They must just not take the work, the extra work to shut these that have the rusty metal in them. That's my assumption. If anybody knows any different, let me know. So the lower gates are opening. They've dropped the level of the water about five and a half feet in here. You could see the number 20 before, and now you can see almost the 14. When you get between ridges on the caps, you can see it. And then, I'm not 100% sure what they're going to do to run these barges out and control them since the tugboat is still up there with the first six barges. I don't know. We shall see. So they ended up just allowing those nine barges to float through the lock on their own. There was some current. They may have been allowing a little water in the top gate underneath to provide some extra current i'm not sure but once they got out the end they just tied them off to the wall closed the gates and brought the last six barges in with the tugboat lowered the water level five feet again and took them right out the bottom gate and hooked all the barges back together with the cables and away they went the kids were getting way too fussy it took about an hour and 45 minutes so we had to get out of there before all the action was over but i hope you enjoyed it well, all the hay is mowed now, and believe it or not, it's time to start raking and baling right away tomorrow. We probably could have done some today if we would have had time. This has been an unbelievable weather week, and the weather's just supposed to keep going. I hope you enjoyed the video about the barn and the little tour of the barges on my birthday. I really cannot stress enough, guys, how fortunate we were with this derecho storm. There's some really, really unbelievable damage just about 30 minutes to the south of us and stretches all across the state of Iowa right through the middle. It is such a mess. There's some people that are in really, really bad shape, have lost almost everything, their crops, their buildings, their bins. Some people have been without power for a week and a half now. And so there's a lot of people that are putting together some great fundraising efforts to try to help a lot of folks out in central Iowa. If you'd like to be part of that, I would encourage you to check out some of the links that I will post in the description of this video. Also, if you're on Instagram, go check out Natalie Kavorik and Crystal Cattle. Those two ladies have been doing an unbelievable job of putting together links for people to click on, to donate money. Go check out Charlie Barron's. He has a funny little video and a great way to buy a t-shirt, to donate money to a great cause, to help people in central Iowa who have just been devastated by this storm. I will keep adding links to the description of this video as I find them. So keep checking back for more and more ways to donate. Thanks for riding along with me today. Thanks for being patient. This week that I've had has not allowed me to get this video out as soon as I wanted or to keep up with replying to your comments. But like I said earlier, I'll try to get back on that and get caught up as quickly as I can here. We're gonna be bailing the next few days. So give me just a little time, but I'll do my best to get back to you as quickly as I can. Thanks for riding along. Thanks for hanging out. I'll see you next time.